Hi, welcome to the Real Estate of Mind Show. We're your host, Glenn and Amber. We help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. We have a very unique, exciting show today, so stay tuned. Yeah, it's a pretty juicy one. Today, we're going to talk about how to get out of a funk. You know, those times when life just keeps punching you, punching you, punching you over and over and over, and how to get back up out of that. So here's the reality. I think people live on social media so much, and most people post all their great stuff on social media, their great moments, their great vacation, their, or their great vacations. And the truth is that's not real life. That's totally fake. People people highlight well, it's not fake, but they do highlight the good moments and well, that's what don't say. talk about the bad ones. Yeah. Right. But thanks for correcting me. No problem. So they they <laughs> I got your back. It's gonna be an interesting day with her because she's very punchy today. So I love her. So we we highlight our highlights. So, you know, we, we sort of compare our lives to everybody else on social media because they're all posting their highlights all the time. And you're thinking about your low times. Well, I've had a low time. And the first two months of 2020 were very challenging for me. And I was starting to bring us down and you down with me. Well, I think the thing about it is, you know, everybody has energy. And some people have really dominant energy. And Glenn has very strong energy. So, you know, that's good and there, bad. It, it is good and bad because he can either walk in a room and bring the room up or bring the room down, yeah. depending on how strong the other people's energy is in the room. Um, I'm usually pretty, um, I can kind of hold the mirror up and say, you know, that's your energy. I'm not going <laughs> to absorb it. But, you know, after a while, it, especially with a married couple, that wears on you. A married couple that works together, plays together. You know, we do right. everything together, right? So we're, we're together all the time, which, you know, is her favorite part of this. Not, Not today. today. <laughs> oh, that's nice. All right. So, anywho, so let's jump into a little bit. And, and this is not a this is not a pity party cry session. I just want to tell you. So my year started right. Twenty twenty starts, and I'm, I'm a New Year's baby. So on New Year's Day, we are literally on the ocean with our good friends Beth and Gerald out of Florida, and I am literally spending my birthday starting the new decade of twenty twenty on the ocean. That's my happy place. That's where I want to be. We're in a place called Margaritaville. Doesn't get much better than that. Just hanging out, chilling, right? Just having a great time. So we come back, and I had big plans for the year. Big plans, right? My coaching business is going to take off. We're going to go to a whole different level because we're going to we're going to be working with these influencers that are nationwide celebrities. And the flipping business is going to take off. Everybody's going to do some amazing things this year. We're going to double our rental portfolio. Big goals this year. This is one of those years where I set some really big goals for myself. And then. Around the 10th of January, I had to have a colonoscopy. Now, you know, it's routine. Nothing major came out of it. Thank God. Test okay. But that process, if you're over 50, is not a wonderful process to go through. So yeah, that was a fun two days. Yeah. So, you know, you're, you're drinking stuff. You're cleaning yourself out. Wonderful. Whatever. So we get done with that. We have an event coming up in Rochester. It gets very complicated because we have a, we have a celebrity that's going to be there. We have a national, nationwide celebrity that we've hired to be at this event. And it gets very complicated getting him there. And... Yeah, just needed to have a lot of things done that made it very complicated. Special insurance we had to purchase. We had to uh, get special travel arrangements because there had to be special beds in the plane. And it had to be special this and, you know, red M&Ms. It wasn't and, quite that bad, but it felt like that. But again, you're talking about people's energy. You know, the, the energy that this person brought was challenging energy. <laughs> yeah, challenging. So, again, different worlds. And he had his own, he had his own stuff going on. So, so we have this event coming up in Rochester. So we're planning for it. We've, we've put a lot of money into this event to market it make sure it's going to be great. Well, right before that, I think it was right around then, I get bursitis, right? So I get bursitis, which is a, my dad always had, I, I called it an old man's disease, but it turns out it's not an old man's disease. It just hurts. Well, you are 50 now. I'm 51, <laughs> but thanks for knowing. In your 50s. <laughs> we, if we kill somebody on a live podcast, does that actually count as something? Is that, are you actually, is that, can they use that in a court of law? That's what I'm wondering. Yes, yes, they can. Ah. <laughs> Anywho, so I have bursitis in my arm. It's killing me. So I have to do this event. I'm on steroids. I'm not feeling good. We go to the event. Lots of bad energy at the event. Um, and the steroids made you feel funky, too. You I were did. Like I, waking up in the middle of the night. That's and right. Not sleeping well. I, right. I was all kinds yeah. of off. So, and normally I go into an event, and I love what I do. I'm passionate. I get in front of the room, and I deliver. Very good energy. And Right. Because I, I love it. Well, this time, the night before the event, I get a phone call from this guy and says, listen, you know, um, I was supposed to stay for a, for a cocktail hour. I'm not going to. Um, matter of fact, I'm changing my plans around. I can only speak for 30 minutes. And I got to be out of there by 1.30. And I'm like, okay. So I have to punt, figure all this in. For, I got to figure all this out at this event. I'm not happy. Now I'm pissed, right? I'm trying to figure it out. And I keep, I keep a good face on. I shake hands. I do my thing. But comes the event, speaks. Does a decent job speaking, but doesn't really connect with the audience like we thought. And nothing, no offense against him. He did a great job speaking, but 
It just didn't really connect with our audience at all. That same day, I had to rush everybody out of the room because the hotel had to have the room back by 5 o'clock. So that created some more bad energy. It created, we weren't showing people that we cared, and we do care, but we weren't able to show it. So it got crazy during this time. Right during the event, one of our guys gets the flu, like bad. Then my son gets the flu. So we quarantined these guys through them. I sent one of the guys home. I said, drive home. It's a four-hour drive. Just suck it up. Get home before it gets bad. He gets the flu. We get home from the event. It's a horrible event, right? Meaning that the only student we actually really signed up, um, we've, we, we've, we've, we've got, let me see, I think three or four students that came out of that event. But the only one that's official was someone that came from Albany, right? right. So we could have had that anyway. So um, a lot of money invested, and we only had a few students that came in. And the, the, a few students that we accepted into the program. There were other right. people that just didn't qualify for Right, a lot of people just yeah. didn't qualify for the program, which, was, which, which made it challenging. So, again, I think my energy brought out the wrong energy of the, of the students right. we had in the room. I think that really was a part because of it. Because you, you attract what you're looking for. You do. And you, who you are. You yeah. do. So the event, the event was challenging. So for, for us, as a financial standpoint, that event was a, was a money loser. Like we lost a lot of money on that event because we spent a lot of money to market to get events and that kind of stuff. So when we do that, it, there, the coaching side of us is a business, right? So it wasn't a good event for us. We come home, I get the flu. Our and home, then I get the flu. Yeah. Right and, our after kid, and our kids get the flu. Cruz, had, well, no, that different time, Cruz gets yeah. the flu. But we, the, the sickness makes me through the whole company. So we're all down for the count for like a week, two weeks, some people were down for horrible experience, yeah. right? So that makes it really challenging. So we get ready for our next event in Atlanta. So as we're getting ready for the event in Atlanta, um, certainly stressed because we lost a lot of money on the previous event. It didn't go like we thought. A lot of challenges. And I, I'm not realizing that I'm creating my own shitstorm. So I want to make sure that I talk about that right now with you guys, that we create our own realities, <laughs> right? Number one is we create our own realities. So if we think positive and we are focused on the good stuff, that's what we see in life. But if we're creating a shit storm in our head and we keep spiraling down, guess what our lives do? Spiral right down, right? And we can bring a lot of people down with us when we go. So we decide we're, we had a vacation plan to go to Mexico a week before we did our event in Atlanta. Wonderful vacation. Amber and I got upgraded scuba divers. We got certified at different levels, and um, we had a great time scuba diving and connected again, which is awesome. Um, you know, all inclusive resort, gained ten pounds. You know, the whole thing, right? Just wonderful experience. The whole family goes. Kids had a blast. We we all, you know, really good quality family time. It was really great. So that part was great. And I had made a decision before I left. I told Amber, I said, I am not going to be stressed during vacation at all. Well, during vacation, our nanny, who's with us, who our nanny actually dates our oldest son, so it's a very complicated relationship, but she's awesome, but she gets what she thinks is food poisoning. So she's down for the count for two days yep. during vacation, right, in Mexico, on the ocean. So we go to vacation, do our thing. Now we're coming back from vacation. Now here's where this story gets really juicy because I almost got arrested twice in one night. No lie. Almost got times. And this, this is not like me, but I want, I want to show you the cycle. So I, I told you this whole story so you can see the cycle. It started in January. It started with the colonoscopy and the illness and the show and then the sickness. I had the flu. The bursitis. The bursitis, right. That was all part of it. So it's spiraling down, spiraling down, and I'm starting to focus on the bad stuff in life instead of the good stuff. So it's spiraling down. And Go when Glenn spirals, it's not fun. Because it, even yeah. as strong as my energy is, it's hard to get him out of that funk unless he changes this. Right. You know, he has to change his own thoughts in order We all do, to, not just yeah. me. We yeah. all we no, all have to absolutely. change it. Absolutely, so, so, but I, but even I struggle with that. So I teach it, right? And I, I really try to practice it, but I struggle with it sometimes. It's like everybody does. So here's where it gets really juicy. We're coming back from, uh, if, if you've ever traveled internationally, when you travel, you have to get off the plane, you have to go through customs, you have to get your luggage, you have to recheck your luggage, then go up and go through security again through TSA, then get on your plane on your connecting flight. So if you leave from Mexico, you come to the U.S., you have to go through all that rigmarole. It's 10 o'clock at night. Is our, our flight gets in it at, or I'm sorry, our flight gets in it. Like, our flight left Mexico at like 8 and then arrives in North Carolina at 10. And then we were supposed to leave, or no, I'm sorry, got in at 8. We were supposed to leave at 10 and be home back to Albany by midnight. All right, here we go. Plane leaves an hour late from Mexico. Right. So out of, the, out of the gates, we're an hour late. We think we still have enough time. We're okay. On the plane, our little cruiser, our, our little four-year-old, Starts vomiting. Yeah, we booked kind of late, so we weren't all sitting together. And all of a sudden, and my little guy was sitting with the nanny, and my daughter was sitting with me. Glenn was in the back somewhere. So my nanny comes up, and she goes, Cruz just threw up. And I'm like, what? Like, we're, we're thinking motion sickness. Right. Because none of us were sick. And we thought the nanny had food poisoning. Right. So I go and sit up with him, and then, you know, he's just, like, starts vomiting profusely right in the airplane seat next to me. Uh, and like, here, like, we're talking about 8, 10, 12 times in the plane, probably? Um, yeah, not, well, I... 
probably not that much on the plane. Probably like four or five times on the plane. And oh, one, I'm sorry, only four or five yeah. times of vomit. But it was a, it was like all of his stomach contents. Like so, at one point, so it all I'm, came out. I'm up collecting cups, puking in cups. I'm sorry for this grossness, <laughs> but I'm collecting cups, going to the, to the restroom and dumping the puke, and I'm trying not to puke. Oh, it's, it's foul. Yeah, people are giving me the extra puke bags and oh, the airplane seats. It's so terrible. It's hell. I mean, this is a major shit show going on, guys. It's horrible. So. This happens, now we have to get off the plane. Now we're stressed, because during the time of this is when coronavirus started to come out, we're worried that going through customs, they might stop and, and quarantine, quarantine our us. son, yeah. or whatever. And we're trying to figure that part out. The line is huge getting off this plane. The, the customs line is huge. We are both covered in throw up because yeah. we're holding him. Well, at that point, you know, the line was moving pretty quickly, thankfully. But you know, I, you know, we've all got our carry on, so we're we're holding one of us at all times is holding Cruz in our arms oh. with the puke bag, so yes. he can puke in it. Sometimes he makes it, sometimes he doesn't. So, Glenn's the front of his shirt is covered. My dress is covered. He even puked like on the bottom of my skirt, so the wetness from the puke like kept. Grazing my right, ankles. They're gonna vomit. They're gonna, yeah, they've all they've all tuned out by now. They're like, "Well, my God, your guy, your life sucks." <laughs> it just it was not fun. Uh, you know, we're we're going through customs, trying to fill out all the paperwork and everything, and get through puke. customs. And we rechecked our bags because you know we wanted to make our connecting flight. So our thankfully the kids still had their carry ons, but our bags got checked all the way through. So then we get through customs and all that's fine. Then we go through TSA. I, this is me now. Now I got to talk about this because this is where it gets this is where it gets insane. So we go through TSA. We're in Charlotte, North Carolina, which not not a, not a good experience for us at all. We get to Charlotte. There's a there's a, a line, but we're all rushing to get to our plane. The guy at the front of the TSA line said, "Everybody rush because you guys are." He knew that a lot of planes were running late because right. there were a lot of planes came in late. So we're trying to go through. Our line could not go slower if they tried. Like I put our bag on, and the bag she'd go back and forth, and she'd go back and forth. You travel, you know what I mean? She's putting the bag to the scanner, back and forth. I'm like, what? This isn't even to our bag yet. Going on and on. Finally, I said, "Ma'am, can we hurry up here?" She goes, "Nope, we're going to go at our pace." Meanwhile, Cruz pukes on the floor because the we're bag even, I we're have. Not, we're not even there yet. It was awful. We're not even there yet. We're still we're still before the security no, line. No, I know. I don't know if you know. He puked right there too. Yes. Yeah. So we're covered in puke. We're trying to get through the line. We finally get through. And the only thing I can say is the guy at TSA was the biggest a-hole I have ever met in my life. And I am not exaggerating. Amber can vouch me. You know how sometimes you tell a story and you embellish and it gets kind of crazy? This is no embellishment. He couldn't have moved slower than a sloth. I I've seen sloths move more quickly. I mean, it, it was insane. And he wasn't doing it. Like, I'm all for people doing their jobs. I'm all for airport security. I want to know my family is safe on the plane. But he was doing it just to be a prick. Like, he was doing it just to piss people off. And the more I said something, the more pricky he got. I'd say, can we please hurry up? My family's here. My son is throwing up here. And he, would, he wouldn't make eye contact with me. Then he would move slower. I'm talking about this speed. Ready? Now, I wish you, I wish we were exaggerating. Now, if you're on, if you're if you're listening instead of watching this, I'm telling you, my hands couldn't move slower. He was doing this when he picked stuff up. He'd look at it. At one point, he said to me, "Well," and Amber opened up her. They opened up Amber's um, case, and there was about you know ten, fifteen little jars of makeup and stuff. And he goes, "Well, I'm gonna have to test all these." And I'm like, "Are you effing kidding me?" Now, now I start losing it. I've traveled with that bag every time I travel, and I've never had. I've never even had it get. Flagged. They keep us in security. We'll speed this story up. We they get us. They they keep us in that line from the time we got to the metal detector or the the you know scanner they do, forty minutes. Forty minutes they keep us there. Nobody else is left in security. Everybody, every plane. Remember, it's nighttime. It's late at night. Everybody else is gone. Everybody Everybody's else is gone. Gotten through. There's twenty TSA agents and one guy, and they're all watching him. And I go, can we help? Can we do something? Can we do? And the people started saying, you have to calm down. I said, calm down. I was so mad I couldn't even see straight with this guy. So my son runs to the, the gate and says, Dad, they have two minutes to go. If you our oldest us, son. Our yeah. oldest son, yeah, yeah, not the puker. <laughs> um, we're still holding him. He's out like a light. He's still throwing up. It's bad. He couldn't even keep a sip of water down. And, he, you know, we got people. A nurse came up, so he's, he looks dehydrated. And, it was bad. Yeah. So our son runs down and says, you have two minutes for the gate. I said, sir, we have two minutes. Can we do this? He goes, I have to go at my pace. My, your flight's not my concern. And I... So then he comes back and says, we, we missed the flight. That's when I call them an a-hole. That's when they, that's when they, they're going to call security, call the police. I said, fine, call the police, whatever. We walk to our gate. Sure enough, we finally get to the gate. And they said, no, the plane's already left. So it's 10 o'clock at night. We're in Charlotte. We have no place to stay. We have minimal luggage. Amber, I don't really have any, any luggage. We have no extra clothes. And our sixth son, and we have to find a place to stay. 
The airline's not really helpful. Um, they, they say it's not their fault that we're running late because they're, they're it playing. Was a, it was an uh, airline thing, not. Yeah, they said it was, it was the. Uh, air traffic control. Air traffic control problem, not our problem. Whatever, that's, that's not part of the story. The airport was not very friendly to Amber. They wouldn't give her more bags while he was throwing up. Yeah, that was I'm bad. Like, I, I asked the attendants at the at the gate, you know, do you have anything that my son can throw up in? Because at this point, the bag I have is tattered and ripping and wet and They're soggy. Like, no, you know, they wouldn't help. Like, they, they weren't. They were so. Thank God, helpful. some woman finally in one of the one of the remote. She, it was, the place is closing down. She overheard our story. She gave us tickets. Um, Vouchers for Vouchers to go to a Clarion. Now, we just came, I'm not, this, I don't want this to come off pompousy, we just came from a beautiful five-star resort in Mexico, and now we're going to go to the Clarion, which is in downtown Charlotte, which, not a great area of town. So we go to this place, and here's where it gets, and I'm going to make this story go a little faster. I know there's a lot of negativity going on here, but I just want to get through so you understand what's going on. We were in a funk. We were in a bad <laughs> funk. I had brought us down that funk road, and it got really bad. So we get to the, we get to the, the place... Long story short, I go to pay for my meal at night, which it took me an hour to get a chicken nugget, the chicken uh, strips, because we were so hungry. We hadn't eaten for hours, and this, this hotel didn't have anything. They had a weird swingers party going on at this hotel, the floor above us. It was so... People I wonder get, why you were gone for so long. Yeah, I, believe me, <laughs> not for that. There's people getting in there. There's a guy gets in there with a shirt and a vest and no... I don't know. It was so weird looking. No... I don't know. Whatever. So it was bizarre weird. I go to bed, I finally pay my meal, I sign for my room, it's $50, right, $50. So I sign for the food, which was crappy. The phone rings in our room at one in the morning. Now our son's been thrown up, we finally got things calmed down, I go to bed about 12.30, one o'clock, the phone rings. I answer the phone, hotel, yes. Yeah, um, you didn't pay for your, your dinner. I go, I signed for it. Yeah, we don't have a credit card on file. I go, well, you have, the, you have the voucher for the airline. Yeah, well, that doesn't count for food, we don't know if it does or not, so we need your credit card, I go. Okay, I'd be happy to come down in the morning and do first thing. No, you'll do it now. I go, excuse me? Now, mind you, I'm already amped up. And she says, you'll do it now. I said, I'm not going to do it now. My son is sick. This is ridiculous. She hangs up on me. So I did the phone off the hook. Fifteen minutes later, two guys come to the room, knock on the door. Bang, 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 bang. Bang, bang. I open the door. I said, are you out of your mind? I have children sitting here. What? Well, you didn't pay for your meal. I said, they had the ticket. I said, I signed for it right there. My name is there, my room number. I'm not going anyplace. I can't leave. Oh, by the way, we didn't have a flight out until the next night, 10 right. o'clock the next night. We couldn't, we almost didn't get on that flight, but through a lot of fighting, we got on that flight. So we have 24 hours to stay in this godforsaken town. I signed for the, uh, I said, I signed for it. I said, listen, I'll give you my credit card. No, you have to come down. I go, I have to come down to the front desk. I'm in my underwear. I'm, I'm in bed. My kids are sick, please. No, you have to come down now. So I go down, I'm hot. I go to the front desk, there's four people standing there, along with this woman who was really like, just, she was gonna tell me what it, how it was. And I, I'm like, you, I walked out, I said, takes you four people to collect $50. Business must be really good for you guys, huh? And I started in with a mouth. So I'm already being negative, right? Ben so, can be very cocky when he wants to I, be well, I very had, quick. I had had it. I, I had reached my limit and I had had it. And so they start in with me and I give them the credit card and this woman gives me some lip back and I lost it with her. I said, you, I said, you are being incredibly unprofessional right now. I said, gave my credit card. It's 1.30 in the morning, and these four guys are standing around. I said, I'm going to bed. And she made some comment, and I gave her the finger. I got mad, and I gave her the finger. Well, they decide they're going to chase me to the elevator, and you're gonna, you're, we're throwing you out of this hotel. Four guys yelling at me. And I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you're so angry that you don't even care. Like, you're outnumbered, but you don't care. I didn't care. I said, I'm going to bed, and I don't care. I said, I'm going to bed right now. You have to drag me out of this hotel. My family's upstairs. I'm not leaving my family. And if you try and drag me out of here, one of you is going to be missing an eye, an ear. You're going down with me. Bottom line. And so I'm angry. Lose my mind. Long story short, one of the guys was up to me and says, listen, finally, after about five minutes of pretty heavy yelling in the place and four other security guys coming over, some big guy steps in front of me and says, let me talk to him. He walked up and said, you know what, sir? This got out of hand tonight. He said, I apologize. He said, this got way out of hand tonight. He said, go take care of your family. I said, thank you. I apologized to him. I said, this is not like me. I don't do this. So we go to bed, whatever. We, we finally get home 24 hours later. But, but he tells me about this. You know, I didn't know what was going on in the Almost in two the in the hotel. morning now by the yeah. time I get back to the room. And, then, and at that point, my son is like, I have to go to the bathroom. And then he had diarrhea all over the bathroom. Yeah, and he's that. puking on. But anyway, so that, that was still going on, too. And I'm like, honey, 
you've got to calm down. If you get arrested, you know, this situation is like hard enough for us to go through together as a family. And our family really did pull together and was awesome yeah, we about did. everything. The next day but we went, we went like, to a big place. You can't and... get arrested because that just makes it harder. <laughs> no, no, no. So. I'm, I'm, I'm not a guy that goes out and gets arrested. But no. two times in one night, I've had the cops, you know, threatened to be called on me. And yes, Papa Bear instinct was kicking in. I was. I was to protecting get our... my family. Yeah. I was prote- That's really what it was. I was yeah. protecting my family, protecting my son from people that were being ridiculous. And I had lost it. Now, let's bring this back. So... I, I know it's a long story. I want to illustrate to you, though. I look back and realize that I, that I really created my own shitstorm by having a bad thoughts about things. I had my colonoscopy, right? Then I got illness. I wasn't feeling good. Then I got to the group, the, the Rochester event, and I started to spiral down from there. And then it didn't end well, so I lost a lot of money there and wasn't able to help as many people as I wanted to because I dropped the ball. I love to help people, but I've got to be in my top peak state to do that. And I'm not always, right? I'm not perfect with that. I think you see these speakers and you see people that you think to yourself, how do you stay positive all the time? Well, we don't. I mean, it's not all the time do we do that. We do make mistakes and we do spiral at times. That's the longest I had spiraled in a long, many years, yeah. actually. Many years I, that I had gone that many weeks. But I came back and I got the flu. And then we go to, um, uh, actually, we came back uh, from that event. I got the flu again. Right before I went to Atlanta. Well, no, we got what Cruz had. Oh, right. We got what Cruz had. Yeah, so we got, he, we got what Cruz had. He puked all over it, both right. of us. If so. Cruz had coughed in my mouth while I was holding him at the, in customs, or actually with that security guy, because we had to hold so long, he coughed and hit my mouth. I'm like, the minute he hit me, I'm like, no. So I get back after that, and I have the flu again. Now I've had the flu twice. I've had a colonoscopy. My insides are clean, baby. Let me tell you. I tell you, I am crystal clean. So crazy. That was, that was like TMI. Yeah, I know. But anyway, so <laughs> just letting you know. So here's the deal. We had to go to Atlanta, and I told Amber, we had a very small event there in Atlanta. We knew that. But I told Amber, I said, I'm done. I am done. I made the decision. I said, I am done being this funk. I am done bringing this shit storm myself, and I am going to change my mental outlook right stinking now. And so I did. And, you know, as supportive as Glenn and I are of one another, I was too close to help him. Like yeah. sometimes, you know, you you either need to hear it from an outside source or you just have to make the choice yourself to make things change. So I want to bring this around to a, a lesson today. And the lesson is this. I know it's a long story and you're probably going, oh, my God, you're crazy. Well, sometimes when you're pushing situations and your family's hurting, you get in situations where you do things maybe you wouldn't normally do. And there's three real things that I think that you can learn from this. And I have to learn from this. One is that everybody has these problems, right? <laughs> so everybody has different problems and how we deal with those problems that will eventually deal with our outcome. Had I been really nice to that guy up front, maybe he would have been nicer. Actually, I was very nice at first and he went down the path, but... Well, he started with the woman in front of us. Yeah, so, it was, yeah. so what, I may not have been able to change that situation. But number one, really number one is, number, number one is to recognize when you're creating your own shitstorm. When you have things bad happening, ask yourself what you're thinking. What are you thinking? What are you doing? How are you treating the people around you? Because maybe you're creating it. So maybe you're creating things that happen to you because your energy, like Amber said, your energy is so bad. Maybe you don't realize your energy is powerful, but it might be more powerful than you think. So recognize that you are creating your own shitstorm. Right? Yeah, and I, I think awareness is big with that recognition piece, totally. just being aware of what's going on. And some things happen that are beyond your control that are do come from outside sources. And it's like that saying, you know, life is, you know, Ninety um, percent what happens, and or ten percent what, what happens, happens to you, and ninety percent how you react to it, and that yeah. that's so true. But then, like Lynn was saying, sometimes you can create your own shitstorm. Sometimes people just thrive in chaos, and that's when you really take, need to take a deeper look inside yourself, and see how you're contributing to it. Right. I think if you if you take ownership of that, then you can start to control because you if you realize that you're controlling the bad stuff, you the the opposite is also true. You also create the good stuff. You can't have one without the other. If you do something good and you say, ah, I did this, I accomplished this myself. Well, great, when things are bad happening, you're making that happen too. Right. They, bad things happen to you, it's how you deal with it though. Right. It's how you smile your way through it that gets you to a much better place. I was not doing that until I did number two, and that's make a decision to get out. If you realize you're in a funk and you realize you're in your own shitstorm, you have to make a conscious decision to get out. You have to say no more. You got to put your foot down and say, I am not going to allow this to happen to me and my family anymore. And I went to Amber and said, I'm not going to do it. Now, you start to climb out and you fall back down. Mm -hmm. And you start to climb out and you fall back down. But as long as you keep saying, I'm going to get out, I'm going to get out. We it, went, it's really a matter of monitoring your thoughts. So when you do start 100%. to slip back down and spiral back down, you have to change your thoughts. I heard um, somebody told me one time, like, you can't feel grateful and angry in the same moment. Like, you have to choose one of the emotions to feel. So, yeah. you know, choose positivity, choose gratefulness, choose 
I'm glad you heard someone because I actually have taught on that several times. But yeah. thank you. Yeah, no so. problem. Anywho, so make the decision to get out. That's really important that you make that. And I made that decision to do that. So you want you to do the same thing. And number three is take action. Start expecting good things to happen, not bad things to happen. In our exact world, we were going to Atlanta for this event. We'd never been to Atlanta before. It was a very small, um, we always look We always um, look at how many buying units we have. And a buying unit is someone that bought a ticket. So if someone buys a ticket to our event, that's called a buying unit. That's someone that bought. So in other words, if we have 30 people in an event, probably, there's probably um, 16 or 17 buy, people that bought a ticket, and they bring a guest for free. So we, that's how we measure if it's a couple or whatever. So that's our language. So we looked and said, okay, our buying unit is um, at the event. We're looking at, um, I think it was, we had 19 people signed up the day before. And that was, actually, we had 14 until two days before. Right. And so it was very small. But what was great was I had changed my energy. And I made the decision to get on that stage and pour my heart out. Whether they, and I, I woke up and said, if two people show up today or 200, I'm going to give the same I'm going to give my heart, I'm going to pour my heart out. I'm going to see the same performance no matter who is there. I'm going to change my energy. I know that by changing my energy, I can help more people because they will relate to that and they'll feel the energy. And we had a wonderful turnout and we had a wonderful bunch of new students in Atlanta. The response was great. Our relationships were great. We bonded with everybody. They're actually out looking at houses already. They're jacked up. They're doing their thing. Um, I'm really excited about the new prospects of us doing something in Atlanta. But I firmly believe that if I hadn't changed my mind, we'd have lost money and been in the toilet in Atlanta also. Yeah, and really, kind of what we've described, or your your journey through all of that, it's, mm. it's more of a victim mentality, like, totally. this is all happening to me. Why to is this me. happening to me? Yeah. You know, why, God, why? Yeah, I have, so, no, I have no control. That's what you say to yourself. Right. I have no control over all this. I'm sick if this keeps happening, but... And that, that's really a victim mentality, and if any of us are honest with ourselves, who wants to be thought of as a victim? Who yeah. wants to even think of themselves as a victim? Or have other people think of you as a victim because of the way you're responding to things or the way you're acting? So, yeah. you know, there are no victims here. If nope. you're if you're being that way, it's because of your thoughts. Yeah. So, I guess I want to let you know before we do our final wrap up here, Amber's going to do it in a second. Is that everybody gets in these funks? Sometimes they last for years, sometimes months. For me, normally it's been a day or two days max, maybe a half a day. I'm trying to get that down to hours instead of days. That last time, it turned into about a six week, maybe about a five to six week on and off, funk. Yeah. on and off. Because I have moments where I feel good, moments I couldn't exercise, so I was sick, so I wasn't feeling good, and I was aching and. You know, it's freezing cold in New York. There's no sunshine. And I'm, I'm just trying to find the positive, and I'm not finding the positives. And I'm bringing my family and myself down with me. So it happens to all of us. So the first step is to recognize what's going on with your thoughts. Be really aware of what's going on. Get out of that victim mentality. And then number two is deciding to make that change. And I think that's a really empowering concept is you are in total control of your thoughts. You know, there's a lot of control freaks in this world. We've actually talked about that before, and a lot of us fit in that mold of being <laughs> a control freak. And to me, control is just an illusion because the only thing we truly have control over is our thoughts. And our thoughts can lead us down the rabbit hole where we spiral, or they can lead us down positivity and growth. And then number three is take, take action. action toward that change. You know, you can't just sit on your hands and, and hope things are going to be different. You actually have to be proactive and take action. Control your thoughts, set the right expectations, and start to do things that you expect to happen. You expect good things to happen to you. You'll, you'll connect with the right people. You'll make things happen to you. So yep. I hope that learning about our shit storm and how we manage it was helpful to you and that it happens to everyday people. And it does happen, but you have a way now to get out of that with those three steps we taught you. So I have a challenge for you. I know that every single one of you that are watching knows somebody else that spirals like that and goes in that rabbit hole and, and has a hard time getting out of that. I want you to share this with three people that you think could benefit from it. That's a great challenge and see if that can uh, help some other people. So cool. Hey, thanks for being here today, guys. We appreciate it. We'll see you uh, the next event or see the next, you. not event, but the next, <laughs> next uh, week. Next week. <laughs> see you next week.